little bit nervous, although she doesn't need to be, because she uh, did a good rehearsal for this. So uh, Eva's uh, presentation is entitled An Analysis of the Performance of Trained Staff Using Movement Assist Devices to Evacuate the Non-Ambulant. Thank you. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'll repeat my name because it's quite hard to get first time. It's Aoife Hunt and as Edda said, I'm a researcher at the Fire Safety Engineering Group at the University of Greenwich. Now this presentation is an analysis of the performance of trained staff using movement assist devices to evacuate the non-ambulant. And I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Dr Peter Lawrence, who couldn't be here today, and Ed, who everyone knows, sitting there. Now today, I'm going to briefly discuss the challenges in evacuating people with reduced mobility, which I'll refer to as PRM from now on, uh, the use of movement assist devices in evacuation, and the need for related data. I'll then describe data that we collected and present our findings from four different movement devices tested in an 11th floor building, that's the building there. And these results will then form the basis for a performance analysis where a simple metric has been devised to compare device uh, based on evacuation scenario. Now as we've well established, but I'll repeat again, evacuating people with reduced mobility is a challenging task which takes careful planning and consideration. In the UK, the uh, 2006 regulatory reform order emphasises that it is the building management's responsibility to ensure that every building occupant can evacuate safely. So it's not acceptable to simply rely on fire and safety services uh, to ensure that other people can evacuate. Um, this means that in-house emergency procedures must cater for people with disabilities, and this also applies to buildings with a very high proportion of non-ambulant people, such as care homes and hospitals. Now, these kind of healthcare environments are particularly complex due to the potentially small ratio of staff on duty to assist in the evacuation, uh, the need to have multiple staff assisting single patients, the fatigue experienced by staff making repeated trips to collect patients, and the possible blocking of stairs from teams assisting patients in this way. Guidance often points to the use of refuge areas for disabled people or the use of progressive horizontal uh, evacuation in hospitals. But as we've seen from full building evacuations, such, such as the uh, Royal Marsden in London, the hospital in 2008, and indeed the World Trade Centre in 2001, real incidents may require people with reduced mobility to travel many flights of stairs. So it's clear that when planning evacuation strategies, the potential use of movement assist devices to transport people with reduced mobility within buildings and downstairs is an important consideration. So there are a number of commercially available devices that are currently in use. However, there are few consistent data uh, quantifying the performance of these devices. In particular, data are required to evaluate the following. How long does it take to transfer a person into a device? How quickly can a device manoeuvre, not just downstairs, but horizontally and through doors? How many trained operators are required to do this kind of manoeuvring? Uh, what are the fatigue effects on these operators in repeatedly collecting <coughs> patients? How easily can other building occupants evacuate alongside devices in stairs and corridors? And how we can identify performance factors to compare devices and their suitability for various evacuation scenarios? So with more data along these lines on the performance of the devices, we can use the results to aid in appropriate device selection and training, to derive and test procedures, for example, in considering plans with progressive horizontal eva evacuation and refuge areas, or for personal ev emergency evacuation plans for disabled people. Additionally, for use in performance-based design, we can incorporate <coughs> this data while considering the required safe egress time for populations that may include PRM, which is any population really. And it can be used similarly in evacuation models, so that simulations can also explore the effects of movement devices in an evacuating population. So we conducted trials in collaboration with Ghent University to test four of the commonly used types of movement devices. So they're pictured up here on the slide. So in the top left we have the stretcher, which is uh, a four person, in each, or person in each corner carries the stretcher physically along a corridor and downstairs. Next is an evacuation chair, which is an example of a chair which is skied down the stairs by one operator. We have the rescue sheet, which is commonly used in hospitals, and this is a set of straps that go underneath a mattress. So you bundle up a patient and all their bedding with them and drag them down the stairs, um, and that takes two operators. And the carry chair is another uh, device that's carried. Obviously, the person is in a sitting up position. And this, again, like the stretcher, has four people, one in each corner, unless you have a particularly strong team. So in our trials, 
three male uh, participants were able to carry um, the carry chair and we used four uh, female participants. Um, so we had four teams, two male teams and two female teams that were repeatedly <coughs> carrying um, PRM down the stairs. Um, these were all highly trained participants, so it's important to, um, to emphasise that the data will, re will reflect some of the best performance we can expect from these devices. Now we did eight trials per team, so they had rest breaks between their trials to try and minimise the effect of, of, of the repeated trials. So of these 32 trials in total, uh, there were two predetermined procedures. So in half of the trials, it was just the device individually going along the corridors and, and downstairs. And in the other half, when we repeated them, we had a group that was interjected into the stairwell. So halfway down the stairwell, we had 24 evacuating participants to see how, how they interacted with the device uh, in these trials. So we recorded it extensively by video. Now I'm just going to show you a very quick example here. On the left hand side is the roaming camera footage. So it's a handheld camera and they followed the device's progress throughout um, the whole building. This is the preparation room. So, uh, uh, PRM is being uh, prepared in a stretcher. And on leaving this preparation room, they will then traverse 60 metres of a horizontal corridor period, which has got four closed doors, then go down 11 floors um, of, of, a of the emergency stairwell. This is the dog leg stairwell. Uh, 11 floors, but on each floor there was two flights of stairs with 12 rises, so it was a very high stair indeed. Um, now, here's an example of the fixed camera. This is on floor five. Um, so we had a camera at, positioned at every floor. So for every um, observation point, we had the roaming camera footage on one angle, and we also had the stair footage so we could um, collaborate between those two. Um, for the observation points, we used the central path and the Pythagorean diagonal that we've, we've spoken about already today. And in addition to this video footage, we took qualitative uh, observations. So we looked at the door transition movements uh, on the corridor. Uh, we looked at the overtaking um, behaviour in the stairwell. And also, quite importantly, we noted all the times in which the team stopped to rest during their time in the stairwell. And to support this data, we also took backup stopwatch data and we asked every participant to uh, fill in a questionnaire at the end. So we had subjective views about the safety and how people felt on these devices. Now here are some uh, initial results. Now this is a summary of some of the key results. The paper has an awful lot more detail and there'll be much more detail in paper to come. And um, again, I'll emphasise this is the performance of trained staff, so it's, it's some of the best um, performance you can expect. If we look at the first two rows here, this is the preparation time, so it's the time taken to transfer someone from a wheelchair into the device. Um, highlighted here, in green we have uh, the best performance and in red the worst performance. So we can see here, uh, for both male and female teams, the evacuation chair performed the best and the stretcher um, had the slowest time. In fact, the stretcher was an average twice as long to prepare. On the horizontal, so this is the next two rows here, we can see that it's the devices with wheels that are the fastest. So we have the evacuation chair and the carry chair achieving speeds of 1.5 metres per, uh, per second. Uh, which is um, the same as Fruin's 1.5 uh, metres per second fast walk speed, for example. So this is a very fast um, horizontal uh, corridor speed on the devices with wheels. For the male teams, the stretcher was the slowest, and that was the one carried. And for the female teams, dragging the rescue sheet along the corridor was the slowest. Again, for the females, this rescue sheet was half the speed of the performance of the, of the chairs. Now in stair descent, this is the average over the stairwell portion. We can see that on the male case, uh, the evac chair and the rescue sheet have equivalent speeds, so they're equally fast. Um, but the evacuation chair was the clear winner for, um, uh, for the female teams. And we can see here that in vertical transportation, the evacuation chair has a very small gender difference indeed. So typically there's a big discrepancy between equivalent teams of men and females in their performance on the stairs. And we can see that the rescue sheet had a, had a very large difference, in fact that's 37%. Uh, but the evacuation chair had a very small difference in gender performance. Uh, the females were only 1% slower than males, and that's a very important finding. If we look into um, stair descent in more detail, so here we take the average stair descent speeds, but on a floor-by-floor -floor basis, and so this is as they were progressing down the corridors. Now, firstly, we can see um, that overall, so the figures in blue here are the, the overall averages. Uh, again, the evacuation chair is the quickest, followed by the rescue sheet, the carry chair, and the stretcher. Uh, the lack of fatigue is very notable in these curves. One might expect that as they were uh, progressing down these stairs, they would get uh, perhaps slower. Um, however, there may be hidden fatigue represented by the times in which the team stopped to rest. So as I said before, we documented the times in which the team stopped in the stairwell. So these triangles and squares 
um, reflect the frequency of stop and the stop location. And we can see that the stops coincide with falling speeds. As people were getting slower, they stopped, perhaps they recuperated, and then they carried on. And again, we can see a bit more clearly in these diagrams that while every device showed significant gender difference, the evacuation chair in the top right showed near gender independence in stair speed. And it's notable uh, that no team stopped to rest at all in, e in any of these curves for the evacuation chair. So looking a tiny bit more closely in the, at the raw data. Now there's no time to do this for all of the devices, so I'm just taking one example, which is the rescue sheet. The rescue sheet curve is indicative of most device curves of the raw data, uh, with near alternating fast and slow speeds. Um, and as shown before, the slow speeds point of average curves coincide with stops at that floor. In the case of the rescue sheet, although teams didn't fully stop, they periodically slowed to a near stop. And again, that might be a similar indicator of fatigue here. Again, it's clear from this data that there are no such fluctuations noted for the, evacu uh, the evacuation chair curves. Um, again, there's more data. So this is just a quick overview. We go into more detail in the paper. So looking at uh, the corridor speeds in a straight line portion. Again, the evacuation chairs, very quick. Uh, the males uh, were slowest with the stretcher. The females were slowest with the rescue sheet. Um, on the average... Corridor speeds on a 90 degree to corner turn, we took a separate measurement. And at this time, the carry chair is the quickest and the rescue sheet is the slowest. So dragging a, a mattress around a 90 de degree turn proved to be the most difficult, um, but wheeling the smallest chair proved to be the quickest. And then finally, looking at overtaking potential, it was the devices that took up the most space. This is probably an obvious thing to say, but it, this is what we found. The devices who took up most space on the stairwell had the least overtaking potential. So any device that took up one lane, so that's the evacuation chair, and the carry chair in the male case took up one lane. Um, in those uh, situations, people were able to overtake. And when the entire stairwell was blocked, so the stretcher, four people carrying it, or the carry chair in the female case, four people carrying it, people couldn't get past at all. Now, to, in order to analyse some of this device performance, we've devised a simple metric. So given all the performance factors established in this uh, paper, um, a user could base a, a place a weighting depending on their requirements or the situation that they're trying to model. And for each relevant factor, every device is allocated a normalised performance rating, so an NPR. Um, so the poorest devices will have an NPR of 1, so it'll be normalised down to them, and all the others will have an NPR of greater than 1. Therefore, the overall performance score, that's OPS on the slide there, is the sum of all of these uh, NPR for each factor and their respective weight. Additionally, because we've noted such a, an importance in, in the difference in gender performance, to measure the difference in gender performance, devices with the most gender independence will be allocated a performance rating of 1. And those with a big performance difference in gender, so um, the least performing uh, devices in that respect, will uh, get a performance rating of 0. So looking at this table... Uh, here is the metric where all the weightings are equal. So if all of your factors are of equal importance to you, uh, this is um, um, how you could rate them. <clears throat> uh, so the evacuation chair, again, is the clear winner. So that's 19.6 uh, on, on our rating scale, uh, which is 139% better than the stretcher, 100% better than the rescue sheet, and 42% better than the carry chair. However, performance assessment criteria depend significantly on the environment in which you're trying to um, consider. So this is where the user-based rate, uh, ratings come in. Um, so, for example, if we take a scenario where the PRM is located on the upper floor of a high-rise building, and which has long corridors that need to be traversed, and staffing is not an issue, so this gender independence won't, won't matter as much, we can say that our vertical performance factor, our horizontal performance factor, and our preparation time factor is given a higher weight, so here, for example, 2, 1, and 1, and all the other performance factors that give in zero, we can uh, recalculate um, our metric and, and come up with the following table down at the bottom there. So we can see now that while the evacuation chair is still better, it's only 71% better than the stretcher, 50% better than the rescue sheet, and 24% better than the carry chair. And another quick example, if you, had, if you could say that there was um, a number of PRM requiring both horizontal and vertical evacuation, so you've got corridors and stairs, but there's only a small number of staff prepared to be handlers, uh, the number of operators for preparation for horizontal travel and for vertical travel will become of, of great importance and everything else will, will be less, so you can give them ratings of two and all the other factors ratings of one. And comparing this again, again, uh, the evacuation chair 
um, comes out on top. Um, but it's achieved a massive 155% uh, performance better than the structure, 93% uh, better than the rescue sheet, and 44% better than the carry chair. So while the evacuation chair offers the best performance and returns a similar advantage, um, it, it, it has now a considerable improvement over the structure compared to the equal weight. Um, so, in conclusion, so again, I want to emphasize this data is for trained staff. Um, so the gender performance difference, for example, might be uh, much greater with untrained staff, so we need to investigate that. Um, in horizontal movement, the devices with wheels are faster than those that are carried or dragged. Uh, fatigue does not appear to be an issue in the vertical descent speed of any of the devices. However, the teams did stop to rest, so that could be an indicator. In vertical performance, the evacuation chair is the fastest device, and it's the only device which didn't stop once. The device with the best overtaking potential for other stair users was the evacuation chair, and the stretcher was the worst, as it always blocked the entire stair. In horizontal movement, the carry chair had the smallest difference in gender performance, while the rescue sheet had the greatest difference. In vertical performance, the evacuation chair had the smallest difference, while the rescue sheet had the greatest um, important performance factors include gender independence and number of operators, especially in situations where there may be many PRM or in situations where there are few trained device handlers. The comparative metric offers a very simple approach uh, to gauge the overall performance advantage of one device over another, um, allowing user-based priorities and user-specific performance factors to be considered. Um, and the metric can and should be expanded by taking into consideration other factors. So as you collect more data or, or um, have a better idea of the scenarios you're going through modelling. So logistical factors such as operator training and the cost of the device. Additional performance factors like the cornering ability of a device. And user factors such as the perceived safety. So we could use some of our questionnaire results, for example, um, to add to this metric. Um, so this collected data is going to be used uh, in building Exodus evacuation model. Uh, for evacuation simulations of PRM from multi-storey buildings, and also to develop sub-models to represent the actual devices itself in the building. So I'm going to leave you with a, um, a little demonstration of the data being applied um, in the model, and I look forward to your questions at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. I'm going to move on to the final presentation for the session. And believe it or not, I've lost the opening. I know I have. Okay.